everybody, back Al Bullion here. Hope everybody in this big wide world is as happy, healthy and safe as can be in the crazy times that we're living in. I want today to talk a little bit about one of the main reasons why I think a lot of dealers and sellers of silver, including myself, are reluctant to ship out silver, gold, precious metals. And that is due to insurance regarding delivery and signed for services no longer being signed for. Special delivery here in the United Kingdom is the main source by which any reputable seller of silver or gold will ship out their silver. And the Royal Mail has changed their policy in terms of insurance. They will now no longer insure a parcel if it's not signed for because posties are asked not to get customers to sign for things. They are signing squiggling on their behalf, leaving things on doorsteps even. And whilst they're not really supposed to do that with special delivery, they're meant to make sure you are at least in to collect it. There are and will be lots of parcels that will be left on doorsteps and there are opportunities for things to go missing. And that is one of the reasons why dealers and sellers of silver like myself are quite reluctant to actually ship their silver out. It is pretty hard times at the moment for a lot of people to get hold of physical. Now, of course, there are a plethora of other reasons why a lot of dealers probably don't want to be sending their silver out as well. There are some wilder conspiracy theories that a lot of these dealers are wanting to hold on to it uh, because they're just trying to get all of our money in and not send anything out. Trust me, that's really not the case with a lot of these dealers. They want to, in fact, get rid of a lot of their liabilities that they have lying around in their vaults. There was a big, um, was a big gold robbery in Mexico that I saw reported on a number of different channels. Uh, you know, it's it's a precious metal. It's a valuable commodity that people will want at the end of the day. So these big dealers don't want to have millions and millions of pounds worth of stock lying around in their warehouses, especially when staffing is an issue. So. Shipping this stuff out is a priority for a lot of them, uh, but it's not very practical at the moment. It does raise a lot of issues uh, for other private sellers as well. So this is where kind of our situation comes into things too. So a lot of these big dealers might well have secondary uh, insurance policies, third party insurance for uh, goods in transit, and that might well end up covering them, but they are perhaps using the special delivery issues here in the UK as an excuse not to. For whatever reasons they might be, I don't know. They might also just generally, genuinely be having staff shortage issues and not be able to actually ship things out. But realistically, insurance is the main reason and a wariness of fraudulent members of the public. Now, 99.9% .9 of Silver community members here on YouTube and the Greater Silver Forum and various other uh, forums out there and communities out there are above board, really, really very happy people, and they just want to get their physical silver. But with hard times, there will always be people who are less scrupulous, and there will be people who will try and take advantage. And you see this more and more happening on places like eBay than you do perhaps, um, you know, uh, just general trades over on the forum. Generally speaking, trades on the silver forum are very safe if you stick to trusted members with a lot of kind of reputation and uh, sales experience be behind them but you cannot guarantee that and there are going to be scrupulous people out there sorry unscrupulous people i'll say who will perhaps just simply say oh that parcel never arrived and you look on the tracking and there's no signature because the postie's just left it on the doorstep or not clicked on the little button box and that is a big worry. It is a big concern for a lot of silver sellers out there and gold sellers. Now, ultimately, I think that that's, it's a problem that you're going to have to factor in if you are a seller uh, and a buyer. I think for us, and this is where I want to bring it kind of how it relates to us and one of the reasons why we are reluctant to uh, sort of reopen our general purpose website um, is because there, you know, there are a lot of new people out there in this world looking to purchase silver, looking to get hold of silver by whatever means they can. And the lack of sort of insurance for these special delivery items is definitely a factor at play for us here in the Back Cowboy and Household. I have always said that I would guarantee parcels, even if the insurance would never look to pay out for these things. But that's assuming that the general magnitude of parcels that we send out would cover any potential losses so you know you send out a thousand parcels let's say one goes one goes missing which is roughly the rate that we've ever had here uh, in the backyard bullion household you know any losses that you incur there is just kind of absorbed as part of doing business but if in this world you have that potential for an increased uptick in that as with a lot of other dealers out there you can't necessarily put those sort of personal guarantees beyond any insurance values 
in place, which is a real concern. So that's definitely a factor for us uh, to consider here before we look to start selling again. And I know it's one of the main reasons why a lot of dealers out there, small, medium and large, are re you know reluctant to start selling and well, sort of shipping this over. They're more than happy to start taking your cash. Um, so there's definitely that to factor in. And what I think is a potential solution, and it's going to come down to each individual buyer and seller, is to just talk about it. You know, it, there is a huge amount to be said from communication. And I think if you are an honest seller, uh, and I like to think that we are very much an honest sort of selling business here, you know, we, we don't sort of hide behind, you know, if things go missing, we've always, always rectify things with customers. There's just no point in not doing that. Um, but at the same time, we obviously, you know, have business needs to meet and we don't want to uh, be taken advantage of perhaps by uh, some unscrupulous people out in the world. So it's a it's a factor for us to to look at and I think over the coming weeks we will be looking at whether or not opening up the website again and having stock basically what you see on the table is all of our stock that's everything that we have that's hallmarked right now uh, with the exception of a couple of kilo silver bars and uh, and then maybe we look to put things open and up for sale again but uh, the, the insurance side of things really is maybe the biggest thing for us to worry about and anything that we do sell uh, I think we probably look to communicate directly with customers about how they want to have things shipped and make sure they understand about the shipping and you know with all the will in the world we'd love to make sure that everybody gets their items but ultimately some of this is out of our control um, so that's definitely something to factor in so just be aware if you are out there selling your silver I did put a video out earlier this week about selling your silver now is a potentially good time to cash in on some premiums on lots of pieces of silver and whether or not that's possible or practical and um, you know the, this kind of thing does happen people do lose out or have claims against them uh, there are ways that you can protect yourself it, it depends on how the buyer has paid for things you know there are um, PayPal issues around precious metals and scams certainly on eBay I would argue that uh, selling on eBay now is probably a heightened risk factor there's definitely a lot more um, silver being sold on eBay and a lot more potential scam uh, potentially happening there so just be aware of that if you're a seller and also be aware if you're a buyer that you know a lot of these sellers they might not be able to accommodate as best as possible and then, you know as I said 99% of people out there are genuine really very genuine sellers and people and they'll want to help as best as they can but ultimately if a seller starts to have lots of things go missing and I'm putting it in inverted commas because ultimately some things will go missing there isn't a great deal that can be done for a lot of those situations and uh, I think it's important that customers understand that it's uh, it's not going to if you hear from a, a seller that something uh, cannot be rectified a lot of the time right now they're probably telling the truth because these situations that we're seeing uh, are unprecedented they're extraordinary there is just no simple way of being able to ship out precious metals fully insured anymore so that's uh, you know where we are in terms of the shipping side of things I want to finish this video with a little bit more of an update on uh, our poured silver side of things for the future so as I said what you see on the table here is ultimately everything that we have that's hallmarked in stock with the exception of one or two other little pieces which are lying around my stock box so we don't have an awful lot to sell and when we do uh, look to start selling again it will probably go quite quickly so uh, the future is a little bit up in the air as to how we're going to do things and 2020 pieces oh the only other things that we have which are made uh, which are hallmarked I should say as well are ugh, the one ounce silver foreign bars so we've got um, this is one of the boxes of 48. There's four boxes with a few uh, little leftovers. We've got 200 of these to list and sell at some point, uh, and we will do so, but um, it's going to be at least a couple of weeks until we know more uh, and also have perhaps worked out the best way of looking to sell these en masse, whether we look to start. I, I'm reluctant to start collecting cash for things until we can actively send things out, and until we can send things out reliably for our customers I think that is more important for us than potentially taking risks with customers and I understand that there are potential ways that you could work with customers and say you know if you if you agree in writing ahead of time that you cannot make any claims if it goes missing in these circumstances like you know missing on the doorstep and all of that yeah you can do that but ultimately that's still a risk for the buyer and we don't like that idea of having risks for the buyers uh, it just potentially leaves situations out there where you know we 
ultimately should still be responsible, but there's no insurance behind it. So it then opens up potential risks for us as a business, but also for customers too. So there's lots of things up in the air about that. But the worry that I have going forward for 2020 is that we just don't know when these changes might be lifted for things like Royal Mail and signatures and insurance. And that's a big thing. You know, there's a lot of businesses out there that rely on the special delivery insurance um, side of things. It's a product, it's an insurance product that people have. And in fact, I remember I was contacted by the Edinburgh Assay Office to talk about uh, sort of third party insurance side of things because they, they work with a lot of um, specialist couriers that can uh, obviously get silver in larger volumes, larger weights sent out more efficiently. However, they don't carry their own insurance. You'd have to buy third party insurance. And I, and I researched it and it's exorbitantly expensive. It really is for small businesses, especially. If you're doing more volume, then yes, perhaps it's more practical, but practicable. But for small businesses, it's almost you know, financially crippling to have third party insurance for uh, you know, precious metals, especially flying their way through various courier services. So um, special delivery really is the only practicable option for a lot of businesses to have that sell silver. So to not have that insurance value for one aspect of it, which arguably is the single most important aspect, making sure a customer actually gets the parcel in their hand, uh, you know, is a concern, is definitely a worry. So lots of uncertain times ahead for 2020 in terms of shipping. We'll try our best to work out a way of doing it. I'd be interested to know if there are any people out there with suggestions or businesses out there that are going through the same situation, how you're handling it, how you're coping with things. Have you got third party insurance providers which are you know, happy to cover these kind of things with no signatures on doorsteps at the moment for deliveries? Uh, so let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Lastly, just for the rest of 2020, the only other thing to talk about and just to update you on is that the Edinburgh Assay Office is still closed. So for those of you who don't know, the marks at the bottom of these bars here where you see the BYB, the 999, a castle and a U or a T or an S, the letter changes every year, they're closed still. So we cannot make new items, which is also a little bit of a concern for the rest of 2020. Anything that we sell needs a hallmark. There are some loopholes for bars and rounds, but ultimately we don't ever really want to dilute our product line by having unhallmarked pieces. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that sort of develops over the course of 2020. And when the Edinburgh Assay Office does reopen in due course, hopefully, there's going to be a huge backlog with all of the different jewelers and manufacturers of rings and earrings and whatever else uh, is sent to them. You know, it's going to be a huge backlog for us to get uh, sort of parcels in. So we don't know quite when we are going to be able to make new bits of silver for the rest of the year. And we've been looking at these 100 gram bars, which are arguably our flagship product for the Silver Forum. And they are such an important project for us to want to do. I really want to do them, but we can't commit to them until we know that we can actually get them done and hallmarked. There is the potential if this drags out for such a long time that we can't get them hallmarked in 2020 to still have some 2020 additions. But this little mark you see on the bottom, the U will next year turn into a, uh, well, in 2020, it's a V, as you can see on these particular 2020 marks. Uh, and then it would be uh, a W for 2021. So we might end up with 2020 bars with a 2021 hallmark on in due course. We don't know. It's uh, up in the air right now. So uh, there's lots I could talk about. I mean, there's other things that are, uh, you know, of a concern as well. And if I just grab one of them quickly. Just simple things like the graphite crucibles that we have, the supplier is closed and they are and they were even struggling to get hold of them before all this crisis really kicked off because of the manufacturers in China. So we only have a limited number of melting crucibles left to actually melt a certain volume of silver. So, you know, committing to certain projects and things for the rest of the year is going to be quite uh, quite the interesting choice uh, sort of saga for sure. So there's lots of things to factor in, lots of things going on in life. But as I said, the main focus for us and a lot of other dealers out there is around insurance. So for those of you who are wondering why so many dealers are not shipping or they're not shipping quickly in the right ways, it's probably because they're working with third party insurance providers to get that cover in place so that they can actually end up shipping things out. And they are reluctant to send through special delivery 
All I'll say to finish this video up is just a reminder for everybody out there who is selling, whether it's your import silver, whether it's just coins that you're trying to sell on the secondary market, try and be as safe as possible. Factor in that out there in this world, there are going to be unscrupulous people who might well try and take advantage of sellers who are just trying to uh, to make ends meet and it's something that you should factor in and i hope nobody out there has fallen victim to it but if there are any horror stories then please let us know it'd be interesting to hear how you handled things that's about it from us today my usual shout out to all key workers and healthcare providers out there thank you for all of your hard work you guys are superstars stay safe stay healthy everybody and we'll see you on the next one please make sure that you like share comment and subscribe for more